you have a Bible, turn to John chapter 11. John chapter 11. Familiar story about raising Lazarus. And uh, we'll just read the beginning of the chapter, first four verses. This is John chapter 11, and let's begin reading in verse 1. Now a certain man was sick. Don't you hate to be sick? And uh, you hate for people around you to be sick, and depending on the degree of the sickness, there's, there's more heartache and more prayer. You know, some things we just go through, but this sickness was really serious. Now a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary, and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. And when Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Well, that's a deep verse. And if you know the story, it's amazing how Jesus raised Lazarus from the grave. Remember, he went there and he stood outside the tomb and he said, Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus came forth and they took the grave clothes off him. And I often thought, what if he wouldn't have said Lazarus? What if he would have just said, come forth? All the graves would have been empty because he had the power to do that. But anyway, it's an amazing story. But it talks about a man who loved God and knew Jesus and how that he was sick. And God used that sickness for the, his own glory. Let's pray. Father, bless your word now. Thank you for it. I pray that you guide us through your word. Open our hearts to it. May you minister to every soul here. In Jesus' name, amen. Flip back to John chapter 9. John chapter 9, just one page left. And we'll just read a few verses at the beginning of this chapter also. The Bible says in verse 1, and Jesus passed by, as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither had this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. It's an interesting text too, is it not? Uh, sin is in our world today and uh, it's caused all kinds of problems, all kinds of upheavals. But because you get sick doesn't mean you're not right with the Lord. It's just what's going on in our world today and we're gonna talk about that a little and uh, I think it'll be a blessing. Romans 5, 12, wherefore is by one man sin entered into the world, Adam, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men for that all have sinned. Before sin, there was no sickness. In the Garden of Eden, there was no sickness. Can you imagine that? Never the worry, the thought of sickness or death. Um, after man sinned, we have recorded in the scripture all kinds of sicknesses, and I want to look at that a little bit. One day when we're in heaven, there is going to be no more sin, so there'll be no more sickness. Isn't that a blessing? And that's a promise to us. In Genesis chapter 2 and verse 17, God said, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. And that was the penalty for disobeying God. And it says, in the day that you eat thereof, ye shall surely die. Well, they didn't die that day. They started to die. But they did die spiritually. Man is, um, Jesus is a, a triune God. Let us make man in our image after our likeness, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And so we are uh, soul, spirit, and body, but we need to be born again of the spirit, and that's where the, the new birth comes in. So anyway, I want to direct your attention to Genesis chapter 5. You don't have to turn there, but it says about Adam, all the days of Adam lived were 930 years. That's a long time to live. But it says, and he died. It says uh, about Seth, 912 years, and he died. 
Uh, this is still fading, isn't it? A little bit. Is it the sound? Yeah, it's kind of echoing. <clears throat> Maybe we can adjust that a little bit, just a little bit. Verse 11, Enid. He lived 905 years and he died. Uh, Canaan, 910 years and he died. And the chapter is filled with that. And we know now, somebody said, you, there's two things that are for sure. you got to die and pay taxes. Well, you don't have to pay taxes, but you do have to die. Amen? And it's appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. So that is coming. But in Revelation 21, 4, God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. That's what's going to happen. As in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. And where he is, there we may be also. That's why heaven is such a blessing to think about it. He said in John chapter 11 to Mary, he said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that were dead, uh, yet shall he live again, because he believes in me. According to our text, God uses some sicknesses and even death for his own glory. He doesn't cause them. He uses them for his own glory. A lot of debate on that. Hebrews 11.4, By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. It was his testimony that he left behind that was so good. I looked, I looked this up on the internet, and if it's on the internet, it's got to be true, right? But uh, there are many types of illnesses, sicknesses in our world today. And uh, sometimes if you watch TV and you see they're promoting this drug, the side effects are worse than the disease. You know, well, you have a cough, so take this, and your arm may go numb, but at least you'll stop coughing, you know. I mean, I'm joking, but... Uh, the, the, the side effects are terrible, but there is a mental illness, and there are, there are five major mental illnesses. Autism, ADD, Attention Deficit Disorder, Bipolar Disorder, Major Depressive Disorders, Schizophrenia, that, those are things that are, are told to us. We also have the 10 most dangerous diseases in today's society. That's a physical illness. And uh, heart disease leads, leads the, the march there. Stroke, lower respiratory tract infections, obstructive pulmonary disease, uh, different kinds of cancers, and they list several, but there are so many different kinds of cancers. Diabetes, Alzheimer's disease, other dementias, dehydration, and the list is so long. Our, our world is filled with mental illness, physical illness, and even emotional illness. There's a, a heading for that. Anxiety disorders, depression, bipolar, post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, schizophrenia, and some cross the lines, eating disorders, disruptive behavior, dissocial disorders. That's a disorder that affects your mood. It affects your thinking. It affects your behavior. And, you know, those are, those are things that are in our world today. And there's help for all of that. And some, you need physical help. But for a lot of this, you need spiritual help. In Proverbs 13, 12, hope deferred maketh the heart sick. That doesn't mean that's physical. That's a disappointment. That's when something doesn't work. But when the desire cometh, it's a tree of life. Luke in the Bible was called the beloved physician. And he was a physical physician, and he helped people. I remember when I was growing up, we had uh, a doctor by the name of Dr. Specialty, And he, he would come to our house, and uh, I never liked to see him come. Uh, he gave us measles shots and chicken pox shots, and when the doctor was coming, man, you just wanted to hide under the bed. But as I got older and I would go to him, he was such a kind man, and it wasn't like individual things. You would go to him for everything. Absolutely everything. And uh, he was such a good guy. Amen? I, I, I think back and I think that was Dr. Luke too. He helped people physically. Then you have Jesus and he was called the great physician. He helped people physically and he helped people spiritually. 
And the physical miracles that he did were pictures of the spiritual miracles that were going to take place. So he was a blessing. And then we have Job's friends, and they were physicians of no value. They did not help in the least. They did not help Job physically, and they certainly didn't help him spiritually. They were uh, accusing him of not being right with God, and that wasn't the issue at all. Anyway, there was no help there for them. Um, Solomon in 1 Kings chapter 8 in verse 37, he's telling the people uh, when there's a plague or when there's a sickness or when there's an enemy, he goes in verse 38, what prayer and supplication soever be made by any man or by all the people Israel, which shall know every man, the plague of his own heart. That's not a physical disease, but to know the plague of your own heart. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? That's what the psalmist said. And so we ask God, search me, O God, and know my heart. See if there be any wicked way in me and lead me because we can't identify it sometimes. But when you know the plague of your own heart, when you know it, then you can bring that to God. And whatever it is, you can bring it to God and he heals those spiritual things. It says, then thou hear in heaven thy dwelling place and forgive and do and give every man according to his ways whose heart thou knowest for thou, even thou only knowest the hearts of the children of men. And so it's only God that can help. And he does help. Romans 10.10. 10, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Give me thine heart, Lord. Just give me thine heart. That's such a blessing. Uh, there are pictures of healing in the Bible. Physical and spiritual. And I think they're a real blessing because if you apply it in this life, if you've ever had a loved one that was sick and you prayed and they got well, that is a happy time. If you've had a loved one that passed away, but you know they're in heaven, that is a blessing to know that. Amen? That's a real blessing to know where they are. And you're going to see them one day. You'll be reunited. But in Acts chapter 3, there's the story of the lame man. Every day, somebody would carry him to the temple and he'd sit outside the temple and he would beg. And that's what he did. Uh, he couldn't work, he was lame, uh, and there he was, just with his hand out. And Peter and John were coming in and he looked at them, supposing that he would receive something from them. And Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And this is the verse. It says in verse eight, and he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. Walking, leaping, praising God. Think of that. What a blessing. Amen? I mean, if you were lame from your mother's womb and somebody said, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk, wouldn't that be an exciting day? Amen? I think it would be. I've told you the illustration coming back uh, from the Chicago area. Uh, we lived... Um, in, in Michigan and I was coming back on the freeway because my wife had a, a cancerous spot removed and we were going back to find out what they were going to say about it and when they said that the cancer was all gone we were pretty happy we were pretty happy we were so happy that a truck in front of me a stone fell off of the bed and it bounced and I saw it coming and it hit the windshield and cracked the windshield and Linda and I looked at each other and we just laughed. <laughs> because who cares about a cracked windshield? We were rejoicing. Amen? And so there is a joy when there is no sin or no sickness, I should say. We have the story in Luke chapter 18 about the blind beggar. And uh, Jesus is passing by and this blind beggar cries out, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And the, there's, his disciples are saying, be quiet, be quiet. He doesn't want to be concerned with you. And so he yelled louder, Jesus, the son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still. He says, what, what do you want me to do for you? And he said, that I might receive my sight. Think of that. If you were blind and never have seen anything, and Jesus comes along and he says, okay, I'll give you your sight. And he gave him his sight. And the Bible says in Luke 18, 43, and immediately he received his sight 
and followed him, glorifying God. And all the people, when they saw it, gave praise unto God. Because his physical uh, infirmity was healed and people saw it and they attributed that to the Lord, they gave him glory for it. They said, man, what a change in his life. Here's a man that was a lame beggar and he's walking and leaping. What, what happened? And that whole chapter is about Jesus Christ because the disciples used that and it brought glory to God. Amen. And so that's a physical healing. Here's in Luke chapter 17. There were 10 lepers. We just talked about this last week. And Jesus heals them. And one turns around and comes back. And Jesus said, where are the nine? Where's the other guys? There were 10 lepers and they all got cleansed. Where are the nine? And only you came back. In verse 15 it says, and one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. I mean, there's, there's nothing embarrassing when some great miracle takes place, amen? And some physical ailment is gone or God answers your prayers. We pray, God, you know, help me get over this cold. And a cold can be serious, but you know what I'm saying. It's kind of a, a regular thing that we pray about. Uh, Lord, I'm really tired today. I only got 14 hours sleep you know, pray that I have some energy. Those are things we pray for. But when it's serious and it's, it's fixed or helped, not only in us, but in other people, we rejoice in that. That's physical healing. But there's some spiritual things too. In Luke chapter 15, remember the story of the prodigal son. What a heartache that must have been for that father. When that young son took all his inheritance and left. He went into a far country and wasted his substance. I think the father knew by the spirit that he left with that he wasn't going to do the right thing. And he gave him all that inheritance. He gave him everything that was coming to him. And that boy walked away and maybe watched him as he walked outside of sight. And a long time went by because it says he went a far distance. He went to a far country. And then a famine came up. And he wasted all his substance. He must have had a lot because his father was a good man. And all that happened to him, and yet that father always prayed and looked for his son to return. And one day, he saw his son coming. Can you imagine that? I don't know if you have a wayward child or you know anybody that has a wayward child. And you pray for them and they come back. What a blessing that is. But maybe they haven't come back yet. And you're still praying and you're still thinking that they might be back tomorrow, today. Think what that would be like if you have somebody like that. Think what that would be like. Well, in Luke 15, 24, the father said, this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. What if there was somebody from our church and they went out and they got out of church and they got away from the Lord and one Sunday you saw him walk in. I've seen that over and over and over in my ministry. And I've seen people just flock to him. Man, we are so glad to see you. We've been praying for you. We had a couple that was out 20 years. They were out of church 20 years. And uh, saw him at a bowling alley. I was bowling one of my 300 games. And, uh, and I invited him to church on Easter. They came back Easter Sunday. And the people just just all over. Amen? That's a happy time. That's a happy time. That's a blessing. In Acts chapter 8, we find that the Ethiopian eunuch is coming back from Jerusalem. He's going back home, and Philip goes out to meet him. God arranged for that meeting. And the Ethiopian eunuch is reading the book of Isaiah. He's reading a scroll. scroll. And again, he went to Jerusalem religious capital of the world he couldn't find God he's he's going home he's disappointed and Philip says do you understand what you're reading and he said how can I except some man guide me and Philip at the same scripture that he was reading preached unto him Jesus it was Isaiah chapter 61 he preached unto him Jesus and this man got saved and the Bible says in Acts chapter 8 verse 39 that he baptized him and it says and when they were come out of the water the spirit of the Lord caught away Philip that the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. I don't know if you were religious growing up. I don't know when you accepted Christ as your Savior. I was religious. I was made to go to church, so I went as soon as I was old enough. 
I didn't want to go to church because it was all religion. It was rules, and I, I just didn't know the Lord. And it was with my, my, my mother and father. It was with my aunts. It was with my stepfather and different kinds of religions. I just didn't want anything to do with it. But one day, 22 years old, I met Jesus Christ. It's not religion. It's not a form of godliness. It's not just, what does this say, and I'll learn this principle and do it. No, it is a personal relationship. And when you have that, I mean, I can't imagine this eunuch going home. He's rejoicing. He knows who Jesus is. He's accepted him as Savior. He's been baptized, and he's on his way home. He went on his way rejoicing. Acts chapter 16. Paul and Silas are in prison. The jailer has beaten them. Supposed to kill them in the morning. I mean, it's a bad night. Of course, they're singing. They're singing praises to God. There's a great earthquake. All of these things are happening. And uh, all the prisoners get saved. None of them run away. It's just an amazing story. And it says in verse 34 of Acts chapter 16, And when he had brought them into his house, the jailer went and got Paul and Silas and brought them into his house. It says, He set meat before them and rejoiced, believing in God with all his house. This was a Roman jailer that just had these two men beaten put their hands and feet in stocks, I mean, ill-treated them. And that, that had to be a hard man, a hard man to do those things. Now he's washing their stripes, he's rejoicing, now he's saved, and the very people he persecuted, now he's embracing. Amen? Did that ever happen to you? If you got saved, it did. You know, maybe, uh, leave me alone. Don't talk to me about Jesus. That was my testimony growing up. I didn't want to hear about it. But now we can talk about him all day. You know, he's a good thing to talk about. Amen? Amen? The Lord came to seek and to save that which was lost. The Lord came to seek and to save that which was broken. And he certainly does that. Isaiah 61 and verse 1. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. This is a prophecy about Jesus. Because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. In Luke chapter 4, we have the record of when he did that. He went into the temple, he opened the book to Isaiah 61, and he read it, and he said, this day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears. I'm here. That's what I came to do. I'm going to bind up the brokenhearted. I'm going to heal people. I'm going to help people. I'm going to be merciful to people. Um, we live in a world and a country that has been plagued by sin sickness. And it does, doesn't take much Bible reading to figure that out. Uh, in God we trust, that's our nation. There are a lot of Christians in our nation, and that's wonderful. But there's a lot of sin in our nation. And it seems like that sin is just growing and multiplying. And things are happening today that I never dreamed about when I first started my ministry in 1980. Never would dream that it would get this bad. And it's not going to stop because the Bible says evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse. And so that's, that's what's ahead. But heaven's ahead too. Amen? So though this gets bad, it's going to get better one day. But there's a spiritual sickness and there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the ends thereof are the ways of death. And we're not talking about being politically correct. In Amos chapter 8, there was a, a prophecy of a famine in the land, not of bread and water, or not of, of food, of sustenance, but of hearing the word of the Lord. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, uh, Paul told Timothy, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke with all authority and doctrine. For the time will come when people are not going to hear sound doctrine. They're not going to hear, hear the scriptures. In Luke chapter 17, the Bible says, As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. You say, well, it's not quite that bad yet. No, but it's sure getting there. Uh, let me find where I'm going here. This is Genesis chapter 6. In Genesis chapter 6, 
the Bible says, uh, I know it's in here somewhere. Verse 5, chapter 6, here it is. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually, as it was in the days of Noah. And then it says, as it was in the days of Lot. And that is chapter 13, verse 13. Boy, that's a lucky place to be. Chapter 13, verse 13. And it says about Lot, and the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. The Bible says that is what is here and that is what is coming. And we look for our Lord to come and deliver us from all of this. Mark chapter 2, in verse 17, uh, actually verse 16 says, How is it, the Pharisees are asking the disciples, how is it that Jesus eats with Pharisees and, or with uh, sinners and publicans? And here was the answer. It says, When Jesus heard it, he saith unto them, They that are whole have no need of a physician. But they that are sick, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. There is no way to get saved unless you realize you're lost. There is no way to be forgiven unless you realize you're a sinner and you need forgiveness. He didn't come to call the righteous, he came to call sinners to repentance. And so the Bible over and over says, um, the wages of sin is death. And we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. And there is none righteous, no, not one. That's why Jesus came, that he could die in our place. We have John chapter 9, and if you're still there and you want to look, this is John chapter 9 and verse 39. This is after the blind man was healed, and the Pharisees are having a problem with this. And in verse 39, it says, And Jesus said, For judgment I am come into the wor this world, that they which see not might see. That was the blind man being healed. And that they which see might be made blind. And some of the Pharisees which were with him heard these words and said unto him, Are we blind also? Jesus said unto them, If ye were blind, ye should have no sin. This is where he took the physical healing and he's making a spiritual picture out of it. He said, Jesus said, If ye were blind, ye should have no sin. But now ye say, Ye see, therefore your sin remaineth. All the fitness he requireth is for you to fill your need of him. I need thee every hour, every hour, because we know what we are. We know the plague of our own heart. People don't have to tell us, we know. We know more than they know. And without a savior, without mercy, without forgiveness, where would we be, amen? And if I, if I had been born blind and now I can see, boy, I would be as happy as could be. That all, that all rhymed, did you know that? Anyway, I would really be thrilled. And I'm thrilled today that I'm saved. I understand it. It's not my good works. It's not doing everything right. It's not church attendance. It's not baptism. It's just accepting Jesus as my Savior. He knows we're but flesh. He knows everything about us, and he saved us. Amen? He knows everything about us, and he made a promise that he'll never break that we'll be with him in heaven forever. That's a, such a blessing. We ought to just do backflips, but we're all too old to do that, so I'll just, well, we're not all too old. You could probably do backflips. But uh, it's, it's just such a blessing to be saved. Such a blessing. Look at Matthew 23. Matthew 23. And I'll get into the message in just a minute. <laughs> Matthew 23, look at verse 28. Jesus is speaking to the Pharisees here. And he says, Even so ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within you are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. That doesn't mean if there's sin in your heart or sin in your life that you're abnormal. We fight that all the time. Amen? But they thought their good works could do what only Jesus can do. He calls them serpents. Look at verse 37. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets, stonest them which are sent unto thee. How often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. I would, Jesus said, I know everything about you. All I want is for you to come to me. That works for our salvation 
It works for being right with God after we've been saved. He knows everything about us. In Leviticus chapter 13, uh, it's, a, it's a picture of leprosy, and this is talking about a leper. And in Leviticus, there's a lot of verses like this, but 13.45, it says, And the leper in whom the plague is, because it's leprosy that's inside, and then it shows outside. It says, uh, His clothes shall he rent, and his head bare, and he shall put a covering upon his upper lip, and shall cry, unclean, unclean. There is no question if a leper came in the back door and you saw his appearance and he's got this cloak over his mouth, he doesn't want to spread leprosy and he's crying, unclean, unclean. You'd know there's a problem. You'd know there was a sickness there, amen? But the Pharisees put on their robes and put on their religious garb and they acted a certain way, and they would never say unclean, unclean. They were whited sepulchers, which were full of dead men's bones, a corruption that was inside. They made clean the outward platter, but the, the platter inside was dirty. And so we see that, and that's leprosy. We would spot that, amen? We would understand. We would be able to see that, no question. Isaiah 6 and verse 5. This is the prophet Isaiah. What a tremendous book of the Bible God used him to write, Isaiah. Prior to chapter 6, he's saying, woe is you, woe is you, woe is you, woe is you. And then he meets the Lord. Something's going to change. When you meet the Lord, you're not so full of condemnation because you've seen what God has done for you. It's mercy. And we're merciful because of the mercy that God gave us. But it says, this is Isaiah, then said I, I've seen the Lord. Then said I, woe is me, for I am undone. I am a man of unclean lips. And he goes on and says, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Man, there's, there's no haughty spirit here. There's no looking down on other people. That but for the grace of God go I. Right? I mean, you see anybody out there and you, you can say, man, what a, what a wicked person. Just thank God that he came to you and that you came to him and now you're a Christian and now you're saved. Praise the Lord for that. It's wonderful. Job chapter 14, verse 4. Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? And he answers it. Not one. Not one. Neither is there salvation in any other. There's none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. One more scripture. Look at Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. And it came to pass, verse 12, and it came to pass when he was in a certain city, behold, a man full of leprosy, who seeing Jesus fell on his face and besought him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst cleanse me. And he put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will. Be thou clean. And immediately the leprosy departed from him. Boy, that was a big day for him. Amen? That's a big day. And leprosy is a picture of sin. And the only one that can forgive sin is Jesus. And so it's a big day. Remember the day you got saved? I remember mine, and I talked about my purple velour couch and kneeling down in my living room. I was the only one home, and I, I loved the story. I loved to relive it and go through it again and again and again, and I bound, because this is the day of salvation. There is a day you must be born again. You got a physical birthday. You need a spiritual birthday. Amen? It's not I, I, osmosis. I was born a Christian, and I've always been a Christian. No, you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior. You recognized you were a sinner, and you asked him to forgive you of all your sin and be your Savior. That's salvation. Amen? That's a big day, and we shouldn't get very far away from that day. We ought to think about it, and then we ought to help other people with that. Such a blessing. Matthew 8.8, 8, the centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof. I've got a sick servant and you don't have to come there. Speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. 
the centurion knew it wasn't anything he was going to do. He had to get Jesus to heal that servant. There is a balm in Gilead to make the wounded whole. There is a balm in Gilead to heal the sin-sick soul, the song says. A healthy home, not just physically healthy. Boy, if you're enjoying health, that's a blessing. Amen, that's a real blessing. Um, but a healthy home is more than just physically healthy. A healthy church, a healthy country. Have you ever heard the term health is wealth? There's truth to that in the material realm because somebody that their health goes maybe in their 50s or earlier and they can't make a living, I mean, health is wealth, amen? But we talk about the riches of his grace and there's, there's a greater wealth than physical wealth. Luke chapter 15 and verse 10. Likewise I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repented. And there is joy in sharing the gospel. There is joy in winning somebody to Christ. There is joy when you see a sinner, maybe that you've invited to church, hear the message and bow his head and get saved. And that's what we all ought to be involved in. Amen. Matthew chapter 25 Jesus said, uh, you went to prison and you visited me. When I was sick, you visited me. And the, the, the people that he was talking to said, Lord, when did we visit you in prison? And when did we visit you in your sickness? And Jesus said, as much as ye have done it unto one of these, the least my brethren, ye have done it also unto me. We are here, we are saved, we are rejoicing in our salvation. We thank God for it. You know what the alternative is. It's just a blessing to be saved. One day we're going to go home and be with God in heaven, but we need to bring other people with us, our family, our neighbors. We must talk to them about Jesus Christ because it's so important. Amen. Well, if you're healthy enough to be in church today, thank God for that. We've all got aches and pains, some, some of us worse. Some of us were facing things in the future. We don't know what that'll be. All of these different things, but I wanna promise you this, one day there's a day coming when there'll be no more sickness, no more sin, no more heartache, no more death, amen? But until then, let's work the field. Let's try, let's be fishers of men. Let's try and get as many people saved, healed spiritually, as we possibly can. Bring them to Jesus. That's the only thing that'll do it. Let's bow our heads, please. Father, thank you for your word today. I pray God you'd bless it and give us opportunity this week, maybe even today, to share the gospel story, to talk about what happened to us, to give a testimony how you've helped us, how you've healed us. Lord, please, bless your word now. Make it count. In Jesus' name, amen.